Okay, so as you can recollect, we have been talking about fluids in this chapter, fluid properties. Okay, so first we talked about fluid statics, then we talked about fluid dynamics. Mainly we talked about uh, Bernoulli's theorem. So Bernoulli's theorem is what you know it's pretty much built up here. So even though all these things looks like you know separate boxes, everything we pretty much use the Bernoulli's theorem principle. And then we talked about uh, viscosity. So we got introduced to something new called viscosity in the last class. And then we talked about the terminal velocity of the sphere. Okay, so as it is falling through the oil, like a viscous so, fluid. Open edge. Okay. Hmm? Can we? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So we talked about the terminal velocity of the sphere falling through a viscous fluid. So what does that mean? So as you go through the fluid, right? The initially the speed of the sphere will be higher, but eventually it will come to a constant speed, right? So that constant speed is what is called terminal velocity. Okay, this we talked about this in the parachute problem, and uh, we did a small derivation in the last class. Okay, so anybody having any doubts? Okay, so if you have any doubts, we can discuss that. So we talked about laminar streamlined flow and turbulent flow. Okay, we talked about this A dB by dx. So the top layer will be going at a higher velocity, whereas the bottom layer will be going at a lower velocity. Okay, so we talked about the comparison between honey and water. So in the case of uh, water this velocity here and the velocity here is not going to be much different because you know as you pull this all the layers will be coming along with the water upper layers but that is not the case with honey okay when you pull it the top layer alone will be coming the bottom layer will still be sticking which means this difference will be higher i don't following what i'm saying so this is velocity vector in the top layer and the bottom layer and this is the height between the two layers. And that's what I told you. This is slightly confusing. So if you have any doubts, you have to open your mouth and ask me what is the doubt. So what I was trying to explain here was if the area of the board was bigger, then you have to apply more force. If the velocity difference is bigger, then you have to give more force. So if I'm having, say, one centimeter per second here and say 10 centimeter per second, let me say I'm going to apply 10 Newton. But for say one centimeter here and 100 centimeter here, then I have to apply more force. So it means for dv by dx is, you know, f is proportional to dv by dx. And then as I told you, whenever there is a proportionality, there is a proportionality constant and that is your material constant. So water will have one value, honey will be having a different value. And that is what is called coefficient of viscosity. Since it is somewhat similar to shear stress or shear modulus we use a uh, symbol eta stress by strain rate okay that is stress by strain here is stress by strain rate okay i gave you this derivation okay any doubts from the last class okay so Fluid statics, fluid dynamics, and then viscosity, right? So three topics completed in fluids. The fourth topic is surface tension. Okay, so surface tension is also a smaller topic, but compared to this previous topic, surface tension is um, 
it's a bit tricky okay, to understand this. It's you know you have to take some effort, but we'll see. You know we'll try our best. So. So let us talk about some simple uh, concepts first before going into the actual surface tension derivations and stuff like that. So suppose if I fill a bucket with water, right? So I'm sure all of you can try this. It can be a bucket, it can be a cup. So you would think that you can put water only up to this level, okay? But in reality, what you can do is, you know, after filling up up to this level, you try to add few more droplets, okay? Very, very slowly. You have to do it very, very carefully. So when you do that, what you can observe is the water level will slightly come like this. Maybe I'm exaggerating the diagram, but you can try this in your home. Okay, so it will slightly be standing above the level of the cup. Okay, or even in a bucket, this will happen. But as as far as the you know this area is smaller, means this height might be bigger. Okay, so suppose if you take a so in your end of your pen cap, let's say this is your you know, pen. So in the end, you will have a pen cap here, right? This end cap. So if you take this end cap, it will be like, you know, very small. Okay. So here, you know, you can try this experiment. So you can fill this up with water and you will see that, you know, beyond this level, you will be able to put the water more than this, okay? So you may be wondering, sir, how come this is not, you know, falling out? Right, that will be the question that should arise for everyone. And the answer for this is surface tension. There is something called surface tension. And that is what is you know, making this possible. Okay. Another interesting experiment which you can try this is, you can take a cup of water. Again, all these things, something which you can try it in your home. So I recommend you to try it. Okay. And if possible, you can take a video and send it to me. Okay, I can share it with others also. So just take some water here, right? And if I put a needle, right? So if I take a needle, if I place it on top of this, usually you would think that it will sink in, right? And that's what is going to happen. However, if you take little extra effort, right? If you very, very carefully, if you place it on top of this water surface, right? The water su surface should not be moving, it should be standstill. So if you very carefully, if you place it on top of the water, right? It's possible for you to you know, make the needle to stand on top of water. Okay, I'm sure, I don't know if you have tried it yourself or not, but I think we have some experiments here. You can try this. I think last last year some students tried this and tried it and sent me some video. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, this is a different experiment. Okay, so I think I cannot try the other one. Let me show that later. Okay, 
sorry this is a different different one okay so i don't have the video right now maybe I have it in some other place so what you can do is you can try to you know keep a needle on top of water okay as i told you you have to be you know very very careful so what's happening here is you know if you see the cross section from here so what's happening here is the needle is having something like a circular cross section then the water layer behaves as so it's like a balloon membrane something like a membrane like this so so the top surface of the water acts as so it is something like a pulled membrane okay so if you pull a if you pull a balloon right balloon material or rubber material you can see it's something like a stretched membrane So we see that the water actually behaves something like a stretched membrane. Of course, you know if you prick it right with the needle directly, of course it will break. Right. The same thing happens here. So if you don't handle it properly, obviously you'll be damaging the surface and the needle will be falling itself. Okay. So try this experiment if possible. You know, try to send me the video. Okay. I'm sure all of you can find some. Cup and water and needle. Okay, only thing you should have the you know interest to do it. Mm, let's see. So how this happens, right? So that's what we are going to try to understand the surface tension. One more experiment I can show you. You know what these students have tried in the last last year. So what this is is, you know, like they have taken a bangle, and I think they have, you know, dipped it in a soap solution, right? So you can see there is a soap bubble here, right? So can you see the soap bubble here? So on top of the soap bubble, right, you can place a very small thread. So the thread should be very very light so that it doesn't break the soap bubble. So now observe what happens. You see the. thread has been kept on top of the soap bubble again this is something which a student has done it okay not me so you see it is placed here and then you know if you break the bubble inside right inside the just carefully observe the yeah. so once the inside part is broken right you can see what happens it takes a circular shape like a perfect circle right earlier it was in a different shape like a irregular shape so let just observe that carefully so initially you see it's in a irregular shape when the bubble inside breaks right you can put your finger and try to break the inside bubble whereas outer bubble is there so so now you see it's like a perfect circle okay so this is also happening due to surface tension so if you are a biology student right you must have studied that in the tall trees right how do you think the water from the ground how does it reach the top part of the trees anybody addition of force addition of cohesive forces so okay very good anything else you remember what do you call this tubes in the trees xylem, xylem something yeah i remember something like xylem is that right hmm? anything else sir there is another several components several components okay okay of course i don't know too much of biology okay. so but the tubes here right it's like a capillary right so the capillaries means it's all very very small diameters right it's extremely small something in the order of say millimeters or less than a millimeter right so when the capillaries are very very small right the water the ground water which is in the ground here right how does it reach the different parts of the plant right of course there is no pump so but still in, in spite of that the water is able to reach the top and this is happening due to capillary action and this is also called So it's called capillary action. 
and this is also due to surface tension. Okay, that's also we are something going to derive here. Okay, so again, I just wanted to give you the importance, give you a practical understanding okay, where, when, where you can see surface tension concepts in your home. Okay, and then biology also it is there. So now we can get into the actual details. If possible, I'll try to show you some experiments. Okay. So as I told you, surface tension is, the way we understand surface tension is, if you take a balloon, right, balloon membrane, and if I pull this out, if I pull it out, put my hands over here, and if I pull it out, what happens? There is some force acting from both the directions, right? So, in a given length, right? In a given length, how much force act acting? That is what we define as surface tension. So, take it down. Surface tension. Again, you know, easy way to imagine this is imagine that the water surface acts as though it is something like a pulled membrane. Okay. So, surface tension is equal to force per unit length and okay, that's how we define surface tension of course somewhere in your fifth chapter when we say tension you know it is newton right force but then here when you say surface tension it is not just force it is force per unit length okay so that's very important make a note so it's it's more like a misnomer meaning wrong name okay sometimes in physics and science somebody starts calling it by a wrong name and everybody starts calling it by the same name so force per unit length so what is the force acting on the surface like this okay again i'm top, seeing it from the top okay if i'm pulling it this way what is the force i'm applying per unit length that is what is called surface tension which means your units for surface tension will be newton per meter Any questions so far? So how do you, you know, what is the source of this, right? So for example, friction means I can say, okay, if you are moving, uh, moving a book on top of the table, right? If I'm moving the book this way, the friction will be acting on the book this way, right? In the opposite direction, okay? Whereas for the table, it will be acting this way. Uh, Ramesh, you can help me. And the other motto, UPS on the net. UPS button just on the net. Over no show. The UPS on the net. Okay, can you folks hear me now? Hello? Yes. Okay, so there was a power cut here, so I lost my internet connection. Okay. So what I was trying to say here was, friction means when the object is moving this way, you know that the friction on the object will be acting in the opposite direction, right? But what is the source of friction means you will say that, okay, you have to go in a microscopic level. And if you see underneath here, you will see that there will be some roughness and then there will be some roughness in the table. So these two are interlocking and that is a mechanical explanation for friction, right? 
and that is what is causing the friction. So similarly, if I ask you what is the reason for surface tension, the answer for that is, again, we have to go to the microscopic level. So the answer given here is intermolecular forces of attraction. Okay, so let's try to understand what that means. Suppose if I take a container like this, So, if I take look at the molecules over here. So, suppose if you consider a molecule over here, right? This molecule will be attracted by this molecule. This molecule will also be attracted by this molecule. Similarly, something on this side, something on this side, something on this side. So, that means this molecule, we are talking about static fluid, which means it's not moving, right? So that means the molecule here is getting attracted by all the molecules around it, okay? Which means it's not going to move anywhere because this and this cancels, this and this cancels, so it is zero. So the net force here is zero. Okay, so take it down properly, a bit confusing in your textbooks. Now, if I go to a molecule which is somewhere near the surface here, right? Carefully observe, you know that there is some molecule here, so it's going to attract this way. You know that some molecule is going to attract this way. Again, we are talking about intermolecular forces of attraction. Intermolecular forces of attraction. So some molecule is going to pull it this way, some molecule is going to pull it this way, some is going to pull it this way, okay. Now what is missing? As you can see between this yellow and the red molecule, right? So half of the thing is missing here, right? Which means this molecule will have something, you know, it's the net force is not zero, okay? So you can see that the net force is not zero, which means there is going to be some net force which is going to be acting downwards. Okay, so that means there is a net force. Because you see there is no molecules on the top. Okay, and this happens only on the surface, which means we have explained why there is a surface tension. Why? Because all the molecules very near to the surface will be having some force acting downwards because there is some attraction. This kind of force, right, which is attracting between the water molecule to water molecule, right? It's called the cohesive force. So there are two types of forces. One is cohesive, and the other one is adhesive. Okay. So same materials attracting each other is called cohesive forces. So take it down. cohesive force. So suppose if I say water molecule to water molecule, water to water attraction, that is called cohesive force. There's another type of force we call it as adhesive force. Right? This is between two different materials. For example, in this beaker, right, you have water and glass. Okay, so if the so when you pour some water out of a container, some water will be sticking to it, right? Why? Because there is some force of attraction between them. Okay, and that is why it is sticking. Suppose if you pour some mercury, right, from a container of glass, it will not be sticking that much. Why? Because mercury to mercury attraction will be more than mercury to glass attraction. Okay, we'll study more about this. But for now, you have to understand adhesive force means different materials. Just for an example, I'm saying water to water and water to glass, okay, can be any different materials. Same material, different materials, okay. 
So the way I remember is if I get confused, okay, which one is what? Adhesive tapes, right? I'm sure we call the cello tapes. You know, sometimes we'll be using the cello tapes and insulation tapes. So we call it as adhesive tapes. So addition refers to it sticking two different materials. Okay. So when they are two different materials, it is adhesive. Co means together. So the water molecules are coming together. It's called co means cooperation, right? So co stands for coming together. Conference. So cohesive force means same materials. And then following what I'm trying to say here, so are you able to understand why there is a net force here and there is no net force here? So compared to this, right? This will be um, so since there is a force acting here, right? There will be a potential energy, high potential energy. So we will call this as this will be in a high potential energy. This will be in a low potential energy because the force is lower. If you are wondering how do you link forces with potential energy, it's very simple. So if Earth is here, right, we already studied about gravitation, gravitation potential, right? So at infinity, somewhere here, there is not much of a attraction, which means at infinity, what did we say? Potential energy is zero. Okay. So since there is no force of attraction, we took it as potential energy is zero. But if it is somewhere here, right, somewhat closer to the Earth, the rocket or something is going to fall into the earth. If I throw a ball, it's going to fall into the earth. Why? Because there is a force of attraction. Okay. So when there is a force of attraction, there will be a potential energy. So this potential energy is higher here, is zero. However, when it is attraction, we call it by we put it as a negative potential energy. Okay. If it is repulsion, we take this positive. I don't following the details here. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So now, since we are talking about energy here, right? We say that the surface has got some energy. Okay. When the when all these molecules are getting pulled downwards, we say that there is some energy here. So another way of defining surface tension, again, you know, take down all these things, it may not be appearing in your textbook. So if you have your class notes, and you know, have some understanding, then if you read through your textbook, you will have better understanding. So another way of uh, defining surface tension is, Surface energy by area. Okay. Earlier we defined it as force per unit length, right? F by L. Think about it. Surface energy is nothing but Newton meter. Area is meter square. So if I cancel meter and meter, I'll be getting Newton per meter. Okay. So that means that is one way of defining surface tension, force per unit length. Another way of defining this is how much energy is there on the surface for a given area. Okay, so that is another way of defining surface tension. Again, let me say that one more time, surface tension is Newton per meter, not Newton. Okay, so it's a very common error. We would think that tension means force, which is Newton, which is not correct. Okay, Newton per meter is surface tension. You will very often you will get some numericals based on this needle example which I told you. Okay, needle floating on the water. 
in reality i should not say it is floating right it's something like you know standing on top of the membrane okay so the surface tension membrane if the membrane breaks obviously it will sink it right so if i am talking about the needle which is needles looking like this right and this is your water here on top so if you are seeing it from here right you will see that there is a circular cross section again you know you have to exact exaggerate the size to make it easy for you to understand the drawing and then the water layer of the water surface is going to look something like this so take down this diagram very important so what this means is this is like a membrane and it's standing over here without breaking this membrane okay what this means is you may be wondering sir there is a weight for the needle so that means it is mg so in spite of this mg how come it is not falling down you know that the buoyancy force is going to be very very low because the amount of water displaced is very very small okay so very often in your textbooks you must have studied that how come a needle sinks whereas a ship floats right the answer we found was when the ship is ship or a boat is made in such a shape that it is displacing lot of water okay whereas a needle does not displace that much of a water okay which means to say that the upward thrust force is not there so if upward or sorry you can also call it as buoyancy force b o u c i don't know if it's b o u or b u y b o u whatever that is okay but here right we are not going to talk about the buoyancy force we are going to talk talk about the tension surface tension so here i would say this membrane is going to have a tension this way then this membrane is pulling it this way okay so this you are seeing it only from one side okay so you are going to be having some force acting this way some force acting this way so along the length of the needle there is going to be forces acting like this okay we we'll talk more about this theta here okay for now if i consider this as theta i can split this into two components right so i can say one is t cos theta this way this way is also t cos theta and you can easily say that these two will cancel each other right because in some equal and opposite but t sin theta will be acting this way here also that we at t sin theta okay draw it straight okay so that means this is t sin theta this is also t sin theta that means the equation you will be forming here is mg should be equal to 2t sin theta okay only then you will be able to make the needle float again as i told you i recommend you to do try this experiment yes sir to t sin theta is equal to mg and because these two cancels out so i don't have to worry about it so this kind of uh, drawing will be useful for your numericals so take it down needle on surface of water <clears throat> Okay. Two hundred, sir. Still copying. Okay. This is theta is equal to mg. Yes, sir. Copied. So no buoyancy force for the needle. 
It's only the surface tension which is helping it to float. Stay afloat. Okay. So take it down. When I say no buoyancy force, it means the buoyancy force will be very, very little okay, because it will displace a little bit of uh, water, but then that force is not sufficient to keep the needle floating because the mg will be higher. Okay, let's imagine that I have a small frame like this, metal frame. Again, we have this experiment in our lab. Okay, possible, I'll try to show you. So, we dip it inside, a, you know, and then there will be a thread connected over here, thread or a wire, which can slide on top of this. So, we dip it inside a soap solution right so when you dip it inside the soap solution this region will be filled with soap solution or soap bubble suppose if i pull this out right you would think that it will break when however if you uh, pull it out very slowly right it will be able to extend for a for a while Okay, so maybe it will extend for a few centimeters and then it will break. Okay, so that is a very important point. So you have to understand that it will break, but then it will break only after a certain time because you are applying too much of force. So if you apply a very little amount of force and if you slowly pull it out until a certain point, it will not break, which means the surface tension itself is acting like a balloon membrane. Okay, that's what I told you. Imagination is very, very important. Okay, if you don't have this imagination, these kind of topics is going to be very, very difficult. How do you think when you blow the soap bubbles, right? A bubble which was this size, slowly as you keep blowing, what happens? It becomes this big, right? How, can, how come it's possible? Because it acts similar to a balloon membrane, right? So it's acting like a balloon membrane and that's why it's able to expand like this right of course if you blow too much it will break and that's what happens in a balloon also right so everything has got a maximum limit so if you go beyond that point obviously you will break it that means i'm going to apply certain force so again in my opinion this topic this particular uh, surface tension topic you have to have a lot of imagination okay the derivations are very very simple okay absolutely no difficulty in derivations mathematics part is very simple but the imagination right why is it happening like this you know how come you are pulling this only when you do this experiment you will be able to appreciate it so when you when you pull this wire to certain distance right let's say you pull it to a distance of delta x so whenever it's a very small value we call it as delta x so just like a membrane right like a rubber mem membrane we talked about elasticity right when you pull it out what happens you have done some work and where did the work go it has stored as elastic energy remember okay so when you pull a rubber band where did the work which you did go it is stored as Elastic energy. Similarly, this is also I have been telling you right from the beginning. The soap bubble acts as though it is an elastic membrane. Okay, which means when I do some work, force into displacement is work. So work is equal to the energy stored in the membrane.
So let's say this length of this wireframe is this yellow. So this area which is extended over here, right? It was having this much area, but now I pulled this out. So that means the area is pulled out, right? So this extra energy is stored inside this area, right? Earlier it is having some energy. And then I'm doing some work. That energy should be stored in this extra area. Okay. So that means <clears throat> how do I derive this? Work is nothing but force into distance delta x, no doubt in this. Okay. But energy stored, I have to go back to the definition of surface tension. Surface tension. Okay, we use the letter T. Again, this is also a bit confusing because in your earlier chapters, T means tension, which is Newton, right? The ropes. But whenever it is T, it's better to write as surface tension T. Otherwise, you will understand it wrongly. What did I say? Energy per unit area. So T is equal to energy by area. Energy by area. What is area? I told you this is the extra area here, which is pulled out, which is shown in a different color, red color. So delta X into, so look at this, delta X into L is this area. Delta X into L. That means the energy stored is your energy is equal to T into delta X into L. Following Ashwin? Yes. That means surface tension T into delta X into L. Actually, here I forgot to tell you one thing. Since it is a soap bubble, right? You have two surfaces. It's not one surface. Okay, one on the top and one on the bottom. So you will be having two surfaces. So since you have two surfaces, the area should be multiplied by two. <coughs> so here also it will be multiplied by two. And that's why you will be getting the surface tension T can be written as f by 2l. Again, as I told you, whenever I write t, I will not simply write as t, I will write as surface tension. Okay, otherwise there is always a confusion. Okay, nobody will understand what is this. That's all. So the work done is stored as energy. So if you know this basic principle, you can do the numericals as in this topic. Again, the underlying principle is the surface of a liquid acts as though it is a elastic membrane. Okay, so make a note. The surface of a liquid acts as though it is a elastic membrane, meaning it can store energy. Okay, just a sec. Let me check out something over here in the textbook. Okay. So let me go back to this handbook here. So what we have seen so far is 
the definition of surface tension, microscopic understanding of surface tension, right? Needle on the surface of water, and then work done on a thin film. Okay, and this is the four topics here to work. Surface tension of some standard materials such as water, soap water, mercury, all these things are given over here. Okay, you see Newton per meter. Experiment to determine surface tension. So this is also given in your textbook. So what we do is, let me copy this. So the experimental setup is very simple. So you have a liquid, okay? So suppose if I want to find the surface tension of water, I can take water. If I want to find surface tension of some oil, then I can put some oil over here, right? And then you take some kind of a frame like this, okay? Of course, the diagram is not given properly in the textbook, and I, so, so this is kind of, you know, attached to a string and then there is a liver mechanism here. Okay, so you have some liver mechanism here. So this is connected over here. And you have some weights which can be added over. Here. So I know how much mass I'm putting here. So M into G will give me weight, right? Weight is nothing but force, right? So based on the earlier, formula surface tension is equal to force per unit length 2L. So I can take W divided by 2L. Okay. I think there will be some, if the distances are not equal, right, then you have to use the moments principle. Okay, this into this should be equal to this into this. Okay, but I think the textbook they assume that this is you know equal. So both are both the lengths are getting cancelled out. Okay, so when you see some numerical property, you have to keep that in mind. Okay, another interesting thing in Something related to this topic is, as I told you earlier, we are we need to talk about the adhesive forces and coercive forces. Suppose if I take a glass and if I put some water, right, you will see that the water droplet will be like this. Okay, even in your home, on top of the tile, it will be looking something like this. Okay, but suppose if you take the same glass. And if you put some mercury, it will be standing like this. Okay. Again, you know, only if you go to some chemistry lab or something, you'll be able to see some mercury. Okay. Or <clears throat> your school, you know, try to ask some, ask some, you know, teachers to show you some mercury. It's kind of very interesting. Okay. Of course, uh, you have to be a little bit careful. Okay. So, but you know, it will not stick to your hand at all, okay. and it will not stick to the glass also. You see, here we say the water is sticking to the glass. And this is water droplet. And this is mercury droplet. This is glass. Okay. You see, the water is kind of sticking to the glass, whereas mercury is not sticking to the glass. Okay. So what we see say here is, the adhesive force between water and glass is higher compared to the cohesive force between the water to water. Okay, so the water molecule here, the water molecule here is not attracting enough compared to the water molecule here and the glass molecule attracting this way. Whereas if you consider the water mercury molecule here, right? Listen carefully. If you consider the mercury molecule here, some other mercury molecule is you know pulling it this way. You see, this is what, whereas this molecule is not getting attracted to the glass that much compared to this attraction. Okay, so that means here we say that the co cohesive force is less. So, adhesive 
adhesive force is greater than the cohesive force here. Of course, both the forces are there, but then here in this particular combination, okay, remember, again, you have to be careful. It's not like same for water, you know, everywhere. If you take, you know, if you take, for example, um, lotus leaf, right? I don't know if you have seen some ponds with lotus leaves. So the water droplets will not be sticking to the leaf at all, right? Let me show you some. Sir, you do the downward force. Downward force. Just a sec. Okay, are you seeing the screen now? Run. Nobody is yes, awake. Sir. Okay, so you see, I just did a lot of sleep images in Google search. So you can see the water molecule here, right? You see, it's not sticking, right? You see the water molecules here, here. So it's not sticking. So that's what the point I'm trying to make here is it's a combination. So between the lotus leaf and the water, the stickiness, stickiness is less. Okay. Whereas uh, in the case of glass, it is more. So that's what I told you. It depends upon the combination, just like the friction. Here, coming back to this, I can say that the adhesive force between the mercury molecule and the glass molecule is less. The mercury to mercury molecule cohesive force will be more. Okay, so that means here I would write it as adhesive, adhesive force is less than the cohesive force. Okay, what is adhesive force here? Glass to water, or you can say water to glass, okay, because water is the main thing which you're talking about. So this is water to glass. And this is water to water. Here it is, adhesive means mercury to glass. So this is less, and that's why mercury is, you know, tends to form a circular shape or sorry, spherical shape. Whereas the cohesive force between mercury to mercury will be higher. Some time back, I sent you some uh, YouTube video links for the uh, International Space Station, right? IES, IESS, International Space Station, yeah, IESS. Okay. So go back and check it out. You will see that, you know, when that lady pulls some water from her water, water bag, right? The water molecules will not be falling down. Instead, it will be coming like, you know, like this. Okay, go back and check it out. So in space, water will be forming something like this. Why? Because the water molecules are kind of attracted towards each other and it's forming a surface tension over here. Because there is no gravity, right? So when there is, so in Earth, what happens is when you have some water molecules, they are kind tend to go down this way. Whereas in space, there is no gravity, right? Of course, I should not say that, but. Um, uh, resultant gravity there is zero. So what happens is the molecules tend to come closer like this, like you know, small droplets. Okay. So try to watch some you know space videos. You see that the water molecules are like this. Okay, so that is. I think that explanation is sufficient. So let me go back to the handbook over here. Let me make it a little bit bigger. So look at this. So whatever I explained to you, it is documented here. Water wets the glass. What does that mean? It sticks to the glass. Angle of contact is acute. Okay, so this angle between the glass and this tangent to the water surface is what is your angle of contact. Okay, look at this. Mercury does not wet the glass. Okay, even if you take some mercury in your hand, it will not wet you. Okay, the hands will still be dry. 
we have some mercury here for this experiment okay. but i have only one student maybe i'll show it to him later so angle of contact is obtuse so here if you see so in the case of uh, so in the case of uh, angle of contact measurement you have to take the tangent to this so this is your angle of contact here it is acute here you see this is the tangent over here but here it should go inside the other surface okay if you are wondering sir why can't i take it here well here the mercury and glass is not touching right which means i should not take this side you see here the water and glass are touching here so that is the surface which you should consider so it means if you see this angle that is your angle of contact theta and this is obviously you can see it is obtuse okay so this is acute this is obtuse so this again i told you i do not know if you folks have you know started visiting chemistry lab okay so when you are visiting the chemistry lab try to you know observe this or ask your chemistry teacher so when you are doing some burot experiments right when you are seeing the water water level right it will look something like this okay so when you want to measure the water level you will be measuring this one so this we call it as lower meniscus m e n i s c u s but suppose if you had the same thing inside mercury sorry same burot but you know if you have mercury inside this the mercury will be looking something like this why because the surface tension is much higher so in this case we say that you know you can you will be having some chemistry experiments where they will say that for water you should take lower meniscus for mercury you should take okay. upper meniscus okay again just for our understanding you know i have given it as water and mercury okay the same thing can be applicable for so many other different liquids such as oil glycerin so many different liquids here why do you think this is forming a lower meniscus anybody and why do you think this is forming a upper meniscus can you try to link this information and this information here what did i say water is sticking the sticking to the glass here mercury does not stick to the glass so look at this you see the water likes to stick to the glass you see here the water is trying to go away from the glass again i am not talking about this part and talking about this part okay so it doesn't like to stay closer to the glass it's you now coming closer to so because the molecules here is pulling this molecules closer to it which means it will form a shape like this whereas here the molecules over here is trying to pull it but then the glass is also pulling the water molecule which means the attraction between the glass and the water molecule is more here whereas the attraction between the glass and the mercury molecule is less here on following take it down properly take make some notes okay so the if they ask you why this is forming a lower meniscus and this is forming a upper meniscus means this is an explanation you have to give same thing can be observed if you if you take a beaker of water and if you insert some glass tube right you will see that the water you know, if you carefully observe on a microscopic level you will see that the water is kind of sticking to this whereas if you do the same thing with mercury So in the case of mercury, when you insert the glass, it will be looking something like this. Okay, 
Why? It's the same reason. Here, the water likes to stick to the glass. Here, the mercury does not like to stick to the glass. It will form a shape like this. Okay. Here, if you try to take the angle of contact, I told you this should be the line. And this is a tangent over here. And this is your angle of contact. This angle of contact is constant for a given combination. Okay. If I take water and glass, you will have a particular theta. If you take this one, this line will be forming inside this, inside the liquid and the glass. And look at the tangent over here. The tangent will look something like this, which means this is your theta. So you see here it is acute. Here it is obtuse. Okay. So I tried to explain this based on a ta tabular format. Okay, so that it's easy for you to understand it. Okay, you don't have to study this and this separately. Okay, it's the same concept. If you try to you know understand it from one single table, you will be understanding it very easily. Okay, so that's what this table talks about. So basically, it talks about why this is acute and this why this is obtuse. Okay, then you may get a lot of conceptual questions based on this. Already talked about this water to glass admission force is higher than the water to water cohesive force. Right, same thing, mercury to mercury cohesive force is higher than the mercury to glass adhesive force. Again, as I told you, if you go to your if your text, if you go to your textbook, you will see some standard combinations like you know, water to total sleep, water to glass, and you will see some angles like this. Okay. Anybody not following anything? Any questions so far? No questions? Kevin following everything? Sir, yes. Following, sir. Okay, very good. Mithun, what about you? Following. Following, okay, very good. Padmaja, following. Following, sir. Okay. And Kita? Following, sir. Okay. Okay, very good. Samyukta, following. Hope you are following. Following, sir. Okay. Uzma, you are answering something, so which means I'm assuming you are following. Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm going very slowly. Okay, it's your duty to know, clarify any doubts you may have. And by this time, you should have started doing the example problems from your textbook. Again, you don't have much time for term two. Okay, so you have to take the effort. The later chapters are going to be slightly tricky. Okay, again, people who are going into engineering, it will be very useful. But people who are not going for engineering, you know, thermodynamics, I don't know. You need to talk about, you know, which chapters. Thermal properties you need to study for sure. The more dynamics might be slightly confusing. We'll talk about that. Okay. Some schools they may skip the thermodynamics. We'll see you know, what your schools are doing. Okay, let's see. The next concept is there is something called if someone had a question. Okay, so the next topic is excess pressure. Suppose if I take a balloon, right? Again, as I told you, for every understanding, I make use of the balloon concept. Okay, so if I've blown some air inside here, obviously you know that the pressure here should be higher than this one. That's why you know it's kind of blowing out. Okay, so I would say the pressure here is greater than the P atmospheric pressure. Okay, 
So if I say this pressure inside here is higher, right? You can imagine that this air molecules inside the balloon is going to be applying some forces on the membrane. Okay. Which means to say that how come you know if there is a force acting here, how come it is not you know, blowing out or how it is not you know, breaking? And the reason is equal and opposite force. So that means the membrane is also having some force acting inwards this way. And this forces which are acting inside is what is giving rise to the excess pressure. So we call this as that is what is the difference between this and this, right? And that is what is called excess pressure. So if you consider a concave surface, right? You see, if you go, if you see it from this side, it is concave. Why it is caving inside? If you see it from this side, it is convex. Okay. So that means we say that the forces which are so in the surface tension also, right? We say that there is some kind of forces acting inside. Okay. Why? Because can anyone tell me why why do why do you think I'm drawing uh, arrows like this? Why do you think I'm saying that there is a force like this? Anybody? I'll give you a clue. What did you study in microscopic understanding? Particles. Particles. Intermolecular. Intermolecular forces of attraction. That means in the surface. There is some net force which is acting towards inside, okay, and that is your net force on the surface. So this net force is what is giving rise to the surface tension. Okay. So again, as I told you, there will be an excess pressure here, P excess. And by excess pressure, we mean P minus P atmosphere, okay, whatever is that outside pressure. This inside pressure minus outside pressure is your P excess. So this is the downward force, right? Then there is a excess pressure over here that is balancing this. Okay, this might be a slightly confusing topic. Okay, so this the uh, net force due to the intermolecular force of attraction. And then we say that there is an excess pressure which is you know compensating this. So we have a derivation for this. For now, there is an important formula you have to remember. So the P excess is equal to 2t by r if you take a droplet right as i told you depending upon the liquid material if it is water you will have a particular surface tension if you consider oil it will be having different surface tension so that means this is your radius of the sphere so the excess pressure is given by this expression p excess is equal to 2t by r but this is for droplet. Suppose if you consider it for bubble, the P excess becomes two times. I told you there are two surfaces, which means in the case of a bubble, we say that it is 4T by R. This is droplet. Okay. Because it is two surfaces. So you can see if it is a water droplet, right, which is filled with water, there is only one surface. But if it is like a soap bubble, then the inside part is empty, right, meaning it's you know high pressure there. But then outside, so there is one surface on this side and one surface on this side. So surface one and surface two. This is only in the case of bubble. Okay, so 
my suggestion for you is you should get started with the examples okay I just have one more derivation uh, sorry two more derivations so we'll do that in the next class it will take a little bit in your time so i have given you the basics over here in the surface tension okay so your job is to you know study all that uh, theory in the book and then get started with the example problems okay so get started that is your homework in the next class i will be completing this derivation and then this derivation these two are same derivation i have given it in two different methods okay so we'll talk about the capillary action which i was talking about in the xylem in your uh, biology you know the trees okay mm, so i'm going to stop here anybody having any doubts any questions before we wind up okay so i'll stop here thank you all and uh, get started with the examples okay so we'll start doing the numericals in the next class after this derivation okay thanks bye thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir